Okay, this is Matt Gen 110. We're looking at, we're just doing a walkthrough of the notes. So they're already filled in. We did some of these in class. I know we did all of chapter three already, so I'm not really redoing that. But four, we started in four and did a little bit into 4.2. So I've got my little helper here to line up the edge. He's a little C3PO, see? Good, 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 good. All right. So you might see his arm once in a while there. All right, so 4.1. What we're working on is we're trying to find a point of intersection, like where one line crosses another line. So this would create the graph of a line. This would create the graph of a line. If we actually graphed them, we would find that point of intersection. So as we push down here, the next problem says, all right, hey, determine if the point is a solution to the system. Well, what that means is you put x and y, 3 and 0, in for x and y and x and y. So we put it in there, we put it in there, we see if it works. It has to work in both equations in order to be a solution. It only worked in one. So it worked in the first one, we got 6. It didn't work in the seventh, in second one. We got 3 equals negative 7 and it doesn't. So that means it's not the solution. That means it's a point on the first line, but it's not a point in the second line. So it's not the point of intersection. So a couple of scenarios, what can happen when you're graphing two lines? You can get one solution. This is most likely what's going to happen to most of our problems. You could have parallel lines, which means they never cross, which means there's no solution. Or we could have one line right on top of another line, which means infinite solutions. So the next page, they wanted you to lay out the scenarios for them. So scenario one is one solution. This is infinite solutions because one line right on top of another one. And this is no solutions because they're parallel. Then they went one step further and said, okay, what I want you to do now is graph lines. So they want us to graph these lines. That means I have to pull the slope out. That the, the slope is the number in front of the variables. There's a one there, so we wrote it as one over one. The other number without a variable on it is three. That means point zero three. So that's this point on the graph. This has a one also, so one over one, but its starting point is zero negative four, which is down here, negative four. And so then we go up one and over one, connects the dots, up one over one, connect the dots. And so these are parallel, no solution, parallel lines. All right, this one, it's the exact same equation twice. So you pull the slope out, negative two over one, you pull the starting point three, which is zero comma three, we put 0, 0,3 down, we go down 2 and over 1, connect the dots, infinite solutions, the same line right on top of each other. This one is a little tougher. We have the slope to 1. We've got B, the one without a variable on it, is 1, which means 0, 1. It's always on the y-axis. So here we started at 1, went up 2 and over 1, connect the dots. Here it was a negative 1 x, so that's negative 1 over 1, 4, which is 0, 4. So we started at 4, we went down 1 and over 1, put another dot, connected the dots, they cross or intersect at 1, 3. So their point of intersection is 1, 3. Um, if they're parallel, let's see, that was letter A, uh, consistent or coincide, that means there's at least one solution. So this has infinite solutions, B, and this has one solution, C. So that counts as B and C as consistent. Inconsistent means no solutions. And that happens with parallel lines. So that's the same as A again, parallel. All right. Oh, this was actually supposed to be on the other page. That thing didn't print right. Uh, the lines have the same slope and the same intercept. That's B. That's one line right on top of the other line. Infinite solutions. Uh, the system has no solution. That's A. That's the parallel lines again. And the equations are independent. Independent are the parallel lines and the one with one intersection. It's a dependent if there's an infinite set of, of uh, points. So that's A and C. 
Uh, let's take a look. We had to graph this, so we pull the information out. That's 2 over 1. That means up 2 and to the right 1. And it's got a starting point of negative 3. So 0, negative 3. So I go to 0, negative 3. I put a dot. I go up 2 and over 1, put another dot. And then the other one worked out to be the exact same. Slope is 2 over 1. Intercept is negative 3. Same line. So what does that mean? There's infinite solutions, it's a dependent graph, and it's considered consistent because there's one or more solutions. Uh, this was interesting. I wish this really did happen in real life like this, but it usually doesn't. Um, Emily charges uh, this $30, $30 per lesson plus $120 for books. Roberta just charges $45 a lesson. And then you get to keep the books, I guess, when you're done with the lessons. So they said, where, what point, how many lessons do we do where it doesn't matter who you use, Emily or Roberta, meaning the money would be the same. So that happened to be eight. Eight lessons is $360. And it's, it's the same regardless of whether you're using Roberta or Emily. So, um... At least 24 lessons. Oh, if you're going to do two years, who's cheaper to use? Well, then if you're doing two years, it's cheaper to use Emily because she's not as steep. After eight, she's cheaper. Before eight, Roberta is cheaper because Emily made you shell out that 120 bucks. But her slope is 30 and Roberta's is 45. So if you were doing more than eight lessons, Roberta's going to be more expensive. If you're doing less than eight lessons, then, um, then Roberta's cheaper. All right. Next one, 4.2. Uh, we're solving equations. Let's see here. When y is 7, find x. So look, if I put a 7 in for y, we can put that in and subtract it over, and then x is equal to negative 9. Um, that's just a reminder. That's how we substitute in. So if, if we have one answer, we can put it in and find the other answer, basically. So look, uh, given this and this, which one is easier to solve for? Well, y is easier to solve for. When when you're doing the substitution method, you want to pick which one is easiest to solve for. And if there's no variable, in, if there's no coefficient in front of the variable, that's the easiest one to solve for. So anytime you have like a 1y or a 1x, that's the one to solve for. Um, let's take a look at this is already solved for us. So we just take this equation, the 5x plus 11, and we sub it into the other equation where y used to be. So we take that and put it in where y was into the other one. We do the distributive property. We combine like terms and we figure out negative two. Then we take the negative two, and put it back into that equation, that, that first one that we substituted and um, work it out. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Multiply first, add second. We end up with one. So there's our solution, negative two comma one. This one we solved for x. x was the easiest one to solve for because look, it was one x. That's always going to be the easiest to solve for. So x is equal to, we added the three y to both sides. We can't put it with the negative three. So it just stays three y minus three. We then take that and sub it into this other equation for the x. So instead of 2x plus 3y equals 3, we were 2 times 3y minus 3 plus 3y equals 3. Distributive property, combine like terms, add the 6, divide the 9, voila. y equals 1, and circle of life that thing right back into the top. We get um, 3 times 1 minus three, which is zero. So zero comma one is the solution for this equation.
All right. Okay, then they said, hey, look, one point, one solution. Um, if the lines cross in one point, it's one solution. If they never cross, it's no solutions. And if you've got one line right on top of another line, it's infinite solutions. So if it's infinite solutions, you're doing it algebraically, you're going to get like 0 equals 0, 12 equals 12. If it's no solution, you're going to get something crazy like on the page before, like 5 equals 7 or something like that. All right, then a couple of word problems they have here. They have it set up x plus y equals 90 and y equals 30 plus 2x. So we take that, sub it into the other one. It's uh, then x plus 30 plus 2x equals 90. Combine like terms, 3x plus 30 equals 90. Subtract 30 and divide by 3. So x is equal to 20, put it back in. Y then is equal to 70. Uh, same dog, different fleas here. X plus Y plus 90 equals 180. That's interior angles of a triangle. I have to add up to 180. We take um, one is 20 less than the other. So Y minus 20. We put that in for X. It's Y minus 20 plus Y plus 90 equals 180. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. 2Y plus 70 equals 180. Move the 70 over, divide by 2, y is equal to 55. Take 55, put it back into that, 55 minus 20 is 35. So the two missing angles are 35 degrees and 55 degrees. All right. The last way that we're going to solve these equations is with subtraction. So we're going to take this, and um, it's called the addition method, often the addition method, or sometimes linear combinations. But what you do is you look at it and you figure out, okay, what can I do to get rid of either X or get rid of Y? So if I multiplied this top by 2, everything by 2, that becomes 6X, that becomes 4Y, that becomes 16. But look at what happens. The Ys cancel off. So if I multiplied the top by 2, the Ys would go away. If I multiply, if I wanted to get rid of the Xs, that would be harder because then I'd have to take 3x and 5x and figure out what they both go into. That would be 15. So sort of like the lowest common denominator that you used to do uh, with fractions. Um, so 15 for one of them, negative 15 for the other. So that means this one I multiply everything by 5. This one I multiply everything by negative 3. And then I'd add straight down. And so I don't think they even wanted us to work that one. They just wanted that as a true or false. So it said, hey, for that equation, multiply the first one by negative 2. That's false. We just needed regular 2, not negative 2, to fix it. All right, so let's take a look at this example. We got 4x plus y equals 9. We got 3x minus 4y equals 2. We multiply everything by 4. And why? Why 4? Because if I take 4 times y, I get 4y, and this one's negative 4y. So when I, after I'm done multiplying everything by 4, I add straight down, but the y's cancel away. So we have 19x equals 38, divide by 19. x is equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, you put it back into either equation. I put it into the top one. 4 times 2 is 8. Move the 8 over. y is equal to 1. So 2 comma 1 is the point of intersection. We found that without graphing. This one, it's almost already the same. That we got negative 3y and negative 3y. So if we just take negative 1 times either equation, you could do it to the top or the bottom. I did it to the top one. So negative 4x plus 3y equals 16. Add straight down. 1x equals negative 1. Put the negative 1 back in to either equation. I put it into the top one and isolate the variable, divide by negative 3. There's our answer, y equals 4. All right. This one, we decided to get rid of the b's because we had negative 3b and positive 6b. So if I just take the bottom times 2, that'll be a negative 6b. And when I add it to the positive 6b, those will go away. And so I multiply everything by 2, add straight down, I get 19a equals 38. Divide by 19, a is equal to 2. Stick it back into either equation. I put it in the top one. Work it out. b is equal to negative 3. So that is our final answer. Well, I can't really put um, it as just 2, a is 2, and b is negative 3. 
Um, zero equals zero means same line, infinite solution. Six equals seven is parallel lines, no solution. And so then, of course, they're going to have us do problems like this where uh, I want to get rid of the y, so I multiply everything by 2 on the top. 4x plus 2y equals negative 8. Add straight down. I get 0 equals 0. That means this is the same line as that. So that's infinite solutions. Uh, this one, what did we do to this one? Oh, we had to rearrange stuff. They had the 5 on the wrong side. We had to move that over. They had the 2t on the wrong side. We had to move that over. So we moved stuff around to get this new equation, um, 3s minus 2t equals 14 is one of our equations. And so I wrote that down right there. This, I distributed the 4, wrote that right there. And then, let's see, I wanted to get rid of the t's. If you want to get rid of the t's, you multiply the bottom by 2, just 2. And that makes it a, be a negative 4t. Negative 4t plus 4t, gone. 2s. 44 divided by 2, S is 22, put it back in, work it down, uh, 66, move that over, isolate the variable. Remember, don't forget the negative there, divide by negative 2 is 26. So S is 22, T is 26. All right, uh, down here, what happens? Mm, we took everything times... Oh, no, I put that in for that equation. So I replaced x with 1 half y plus 4. I do the substitution method. Multiplied it by 6. Got 3y plus 24 minus 3y. Uh-oh. So something crazy. We get 24 equals 6. It does not equal 6. So that's no solution. Whenever the variables all go away and you end up with a number equal to a number that aren't equal, that's no solution. Those are parallel lines, inconsistent, independent. All right. 6x minus y is equal to negative 15. 13 plus 2x is equal to 3y. Uh, I think I rearranged it and did the addition method. So we left that alone. We just moved the 3y over and the 13 over to get that. That's what happened right there. And then I decided to get rid of the y. So if I multiply everything on top by negative 3, that's the result. And then I get positive 3y and negative 3y that cancel away. I got negative 16x is equal to is equal to regular 32. Divide by negative 16, that's negative 2. And then take negative 2 and pop it back in wherever, into this or this or this or this, any of those equations. Um, I put it into this one and then figured it out. y is equal to 3. So negative 2. Okay, dokie. And then the last section, 4-4. Four, four. These are word problems. And so the word problems, you read through them. Keisha bought large pizzas, uh, three large pizzas, two garlic breads, that much money. So 3P plus 2G equals 26.75. Donna, four large pizzas, four garlic breads, 4P plus 4G, 39 bucks. And now use the addition method. Let's get rid of the G. Multiply everything by negative 2 on the top. I get negative 4G, positive 4G. Those go away. Negative 2P equals negative 1450. Divide by negative. A negative divided by negative is positive. Seven and a quarter. Pizzas were $7.25. Put that back into either equation. I did the bottom one. And solve for G. 4G is equal to 10, uh, G is 2.5, for um, garlic bread. Uh, coins, all right, so uh, what do we have? Half dollars and quarters, so I did H plus Q is equal to 30 coins total. And two more than six times the known of half dollars. So quarters are equal to 2 plus 6H. This is set up for substitution. You take that, put it in for the Q, combine like terms, isolate the variable, and voila. Okay. Uh, four half dollars. And then if there's four half dollars and 30 coins total, then it has to be 26 quarters. All right. And the last one.
Oh, it's going to be this 20 minute video. Sorry. Uh, the last one, X plus Y is equal to 3,400. She's borrowing money at two different rates. 5% on X, 7% on Y, so 0 0.05. You got to make the percent into a decimal before you can work it. So 7 becomes 0 0.07, uh, 1950 total in interest. And so now look, we have these two equations. Just like before, let's get rid of the X. We multiply everything by negative 0 0.05 times everything in there. So you get that, that, and negative 1700. Add straight down, the x's go away. 0 0.02y equals 250. Divide both sides by 0 0.02. It's a real life problem, so they're kind of ugly numbers. So you got to use your calculator. 250 divided by 0 0.02 is 12,500. That was y. Y was 7%. So that's why we said 12,5 at 7. And then she borrowed 34 grand total. So if you take 34,000 and subtract off the 12,500. You get $21,500. That is the note packet for um, chapter four, Matt Gen 110. Bye.